Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss a question from GATE 2020 Mechanical Engineering Set 1 and it's a very direct, straightforward and simple question and it is not something that I have not taught you but the thing is that at majority of the places right now when I am recording this video the answer and solution of this question has been given incorrectly and no source has uh, you know given the correct answer and solution although it's a very normal question and i've already uh, you know told this concept to you in the different courses the question is from milling the question says that a 25 mm cross 25 mm slot is to be milled in a workpiece of 300 mm length so this is the dimension of slot that is to be made it is to be milled and the workpiece is having a length of 300 mm all right so, if I show you a general idea of the workpiece, so this is a workpiece we have, this dimension of the workpiece is 300 mm, the length and you need to mill a slot through this particular workpiece, alright. And this slot is having a dimension of 25 cross 25. So, if I show you the, uh, you know, view of this workpiece from this end so this is how it is going to look this dimension is 25 mm this dimension is 25 mm all right and if i show you the length from the side view then this is the side and this is having a length of 300 mm okay and the milling is to be done using a side and face milling cutter of diameter 100 mm width 25 mm and having 20 teeth. So obviously if you want to do a milling on this as well as this side so you need to mill it at two different surfaces at the same time. So we are going to use a side as well as face milling cutter a same cutter which will side as well as face mill this slot okay. So suppose we are having a cutter like this. This is the cutter that we have, it will be having certain teeth, alright and this will be rotated and passed through this workpiece in order to create the slot. It says that the diameter of this cutter is 100 mm, so this diameter is 100 mm, radius 50 mm and obviously if you want to create a width of 25 mm in the slot then the cutter should also have the same width because the cutter is going to pass like this right into the board like this so it should also have the width of 25 mm which it is having it is having width 25 mm okay and it is having 20 teeth okay for a depth of cut 5 mm the cutter as it moves through the workpiece the depth of cut that it creates is not directly 25 mm only 5 mm depth of cut it reaches in one pass then what happens it moves from here to here creates a width of 25 but the depth of 5 mm only is created then it comes back again and then it again goes and then again and again until it creates a total depth of 25 mm okay so the depth of cut is 5 mm it means we have to go through 5 passes in order to complete you know the machining of this slot of this 25 by 25 mm slot okay the feed per tooth is 0.1 mm, cutting speed is given 35 meter per minute and approach and over travel distance is given 5 mm each and it is asking you that the time required for milling this slot in minutes you have to round off the answer to one decimal place. So as I have already told you in the course that whatever question you get on machining you should try to apply the normal logical unitary method in order to solve the question rather than learning any formula and directly trying to apply them the best way is that use your common sense and unitary method we have solved such questions and you can easily find out the solution the answer of any given question now in this case what you need to do you have to cover a certain length at a certain speed so whatever time you want to find out machining time what will be that the total length which is to be traveled by the cutter right total length to be traveled divided by at what speed it is going to cover that distance that will give you the time for one motion of the cutter for one pass of the cutter from one end to the other end and multiply that 
with the number of passes and you will get the answer here we know that total depth is to be greater 25 mm in one pass it only reaches a depth of 5 mm so total 5 times it need to pass so this is known to us 5 Correct. how much length it need to cover obviously that is not 300 why because it has to cover 300 but question has given that it should have some approach as well as over travel so what should you do should you just add the 5 mm approach and 5 mm over travel to the length and that will be your length no in such cases of milling there is one additional approach that you need to take that is compulsory to take the name of that approach is compulsory approach itself or mandatory approach itself right and why is that needed we have covered that already in the course but let's uh, discuss that I will clear this up and then I will show you that how compulsory approach is going to uh, slightly change this question now have a look at this diagram this is the cutter that we have its diameter is 100 so radius will be 50 and this is the depth of cut this is the depth of cut of 5 mm all right of 5 mm that is needed to be created now you can clearly see that since the depth of cut is not equal to radius rather it is smaller than the radius so this point of contact will be below the horizontal level of the center this is the center of the cutter so this point will be below the horizontal level of the center because this distance of depth of cut is less than the radius correct and this is the case that we have discussed specifically this case also I have told you that how you can find out the compulsory approach in this case now for those of you who are not aware of compulsory approach I am not going to discuss that in detail because this is not the video on uh, you know the whole study of milling but I am just going to touch the basics of that look if you want to machine this what material you need to remove this shaded region is needed to be removed right now if you want to start the machining if you want to start removing this material you cannot directly start from the bottom part because as you can see when you will bring the cutter in contact it will touch it at this point correct so whole length this whole depth will not be engaged by the cutter initially what you need to do you need to feed the cutter you need to you know push the cutter into the workpiece up to a certain distance after that it will fully engage with the depth then the whole machining will start right that length up to which you need to push it in order to totally engage the depth of cut is called as compulsory approach for example in this case if you see when you will start moving the cutter into the slot to create the slot it will start removing material like this right suppose it will move somewhat ahead like this so what will happen this much material it will remove correct but as it will keep on going inside a time will come when it will engage up to the bottom point of this depth of cut then the total machining of the full depth will start correct and when will that happen when this point this bottom point let's say this point is a when this point a reaches here then it will happen right you can see this and if you have a circle like this in order to totally enter the circle into that rectangle you need to enter the bottom most point of the circle up to this point then you can say that it has totally entered totally engaged the depth of cut even if this point a is slightly before the workpiece then some part will be left if a point is here and if you make a circle at this point considering a to be the bottom point some part of it will be left on the bottom side right it will not be fully engaged again i am telling you that these are the basics if you already know this i am sure this is something uh, that is not very interesting for you anyway so in order to totally engage the depth you need to move this point a up to this point and this distance is compulsory approach correct and as it will totally engage it then that bottom point a need to move up to this point in order to complete the machining same explanation is given for that and also 
but as I told you not going into that detail currently because we are discussing this video okay so how much length is needed to be traveled by the cutter in order to complete the machining from beginning to the end the length of the workpiece this length plus compulsory approach right now this question has additionally given you one approach and over travel both are 5 mm so it says that before touching the workpiece at this point it is still given some approach length and after it reaches at this point it moves ahead by some distance which is over travel right so total length that it needs to cover is approach plus compulsory approach plus length plus over travel so you need to add approach plus over travel here now how much is the length 300 how much is the approach 5 this approach and over travel is also given you as 5 but how to calculate the compulsory approach simple geometry have a look at this diagram here compulsory approach as I told you is this distance compulsory approach right now this distance is equal to this distance and in this triangle O B C which is a right triangle this hypotenuse is 50 radius and this length O C is equal to O A minus A C A C is depth of cut which is 5 so O C will be 45 and this C B you need to calculate which is compulsory approach so simply C B is equal to root over hypotenuse square minus O C square which is root over 50 square minus 45 square and this will be compulsory approach this will be added here so you can calculate that which is 21.794 so this is equal to 21.794 this will be added here so you have to add this to 310 so you will get 331.794 as the effective length that this needs to cover in order to complete the machining. Now coming back to the, the normal expression that I told you that total time taken is total distance to be traveled divided by the speed at which it is, it is traveling multiplied by the number of times it has to travel. So length we know number of times that we need to travel that also we know what is the speed with which it is cutting it with which it is uh, traveling ahead that is needed to be calculated and how we can do that the question has given you that feed per tooth is 0.1 mm and number of teeth are 20 so if this cutter on the periphery has 20 teeth and for one tooth it has a feed of 0.1 mm so in one revolution how much distance it will travel feed per tooth means distance traveled per tooth multiplied by how many teeth it has 20 this is the I'm not writing the whole language here like uh, we generally do I'm just trying to summarize the things for you so this is the distance that it travels for one teeth multiplied by 20 teeth means for whole revolution how much distance it will travel so traveled in one teeth multiplied by number of teeth correct it is 2 mm since this is 20 sorry since this is 0.1 mm so in one revolution it moves by 2 mm okay if you want to find out the speed of the cutter means in unit time how much distance it is covering correct in one revolution it covers 2 mm and if I know that how many revolutions it make per unit time then I will be able to calculate how much distance it travels per unit time right distance travel in one revolution multiplied by number of revolution per unit time will give you total distance traveled per unit time right which is nothing but speed so now what we need to do we know how much is the distance it travel in one revolution if we can simply calculate number of revolutions per unit time we will be able to find out the velocity which we can use to do the further calculation now how do we calculate the number of revolution per unit time we have the data given for that cutting speed cutting speed basically is the peripheral speed of this cutter means if we have a circle like this 
So how much will be the cutting velocity? Because it is cutting from the ends of it, right? From the periphery, you can say. So this velocity is given to us. This is the radius and it is rotating. So we can simply apply V is equal to R omega. V is given as 35 meter per minute. So we can convert meter to mm. So 35,000 mm per minute is equal to R radius is 50 mm. This is 100 mm. Diameter is 100 mm. So radius is 50 mm. Omega is 2 pi n where n is in RPM. So if you do the simplification, you will get n is equal to correct. Now there is no need to put the value of pi here and solve it. Let's keep it just like this. So we know that these many number of revolutions it will make per minute. And in one revolution, it moves by 2 mm. So with by how much distance it moves per mm? That will be per minute. That will be equal to 2 mm multiplied by 350 divided by pi. This much mm per minute is the speed with which it is traveling ahead. So to calculate the total machining time, you simply need to calculate the time taken for one pass multiplied by number of passes. Time taken for one pass multiplied by number of passes. For one pass, effective distance to be traveled is this much in mm divided by the speed with which it is traveling is 700 divided by pi multiplied by 5 number of passes will be needed. 25 mm depth is to be covered 5 mm each in one pass. So if you simplify that, you will get this answer. And since question specifically mentioned to round off the answer to one decimal place. So if we round this off, we will get 7.4 is the answer for this question.